Pickaxe. Hello, Hello everyone. Welcome to, to Yellow! <laughs> My neighbors are going to call the police. <laughs> oh, hello, my neighbors is going to call the police. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hello, my name is... My name, <laughs> we are all over the fucking shop. Hi. Listen, we're rusty. Rusty. Oh, I'm a creaky little gate today. Ooh. But Ooh. Welcome back to Yomp, everybody. It's back. My name is Sophie, a.k.a. Booth. Um, and I'm, as always, joined by the beautifully fragrant, Ooh. effervescent G-Star Games. Hello, it is me, G-Star Games. Usually Simon introduces me or you, and then you introduce me. So it's kind of weird to be like both starting off the yomp and then... But yeah. we, have, we have no idea what we're doing without a man yeah. to control us. We yeah, are. usually he's got the what are those like leashes that parents use on their children? The ones <laughs> like the harnesses. I think you know, the shock collar. He's got the, the proper dog collars for us. Yeah, I mean sometimes it felt like that. <laughs> Good <laughs> for him. He's... Good for him. Yeah. Everybody needs a hobby, and yeah. Simon's hobby was controlling women. <laughs> Two women. Two women. Uh, we are without Simon today because Simon's on a little hiatus for a bit longer than we are on the yeah, hiatus. Yeah, we should for. probably explain ourselves a little bit here because, you know, some of you maybe um, don't know the Yogg's cast very well or don't keep up to date with like our socials or anything like that. So, you know, we've, we've had, we've had uh, just a couple things happen in our personal lives and we, we've needed a bit of a break. Um, but Which is good and i i highly recommend taking breaks uh, yes. regularly probably every 10 to 15 minutes um if possible uh, like just keep taking your breaks don't fucking don't fall into the trap of i need to be working because society tells me so i took <laughs> i took like so she took that personally <laughs> okay I took, <laughs> I, and i was all right i'm taking three months off or whatever it was and oh god when been... was our last episode i'm uh, march uh, i feel like a pain in my heart right now okay so i think the hidden was our last one and it was the end of march so mm. we are april may june july august september <gasps> stop counting i'm sorry but I have missed you, and I've missed doing this, so... I've missed you, and I've missed talking about movies. Yes. And, um... Uh, oh, we did have we did have our live, um... <laughs> our live podcast in which I was afflicted with the plague. You poor thing. We've had, so, we've had a few things working against us, like, like the universe is trying to kind of stop us a little bit, but we will not be deterred. No, even COVID couldn't stop me. I, oh, it did for a bit. I'll it did for a that. little bit, but yeah, she's that back. Was, that was shit. I couldn't even watch movies half the time. Mm, not even the was, shit ones that she no, loves so much. I love the shit ones. Like <laughs> I've been completely unable to do much. Like it's only recently that I'm upright, and you know it's pretty. It's all right. I'm fine with being upright. I prefer laying it's down. All right. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I managed to watch, uh, let me see, if I got my diary. Because I have still been watching a lot of films. Uh, let's see. I wa oh, God, I did watch some absolute garbage there when I was Well, poorly. you document everything on Letterboxd, so that's, you know, you can, you've got a, <laughs> a bit of paper trail of your... I watched your... all the Final Destination movies. <laughs> I don't know why you subjected yourself to that. It was fucking hilarious. Holy shit. I love them. I, I'd only seen two of them before. So yeah. I decided, you know what? I'm going to do it. I watched five and then I watched the first one. And then I watched the second one, the third one and the fourth one. So I did it in a weird order. Did um, you watch, um, if you haven't, did you watch Long Legs? I haven't seen Long Legs. I would I recommend it, yeah. I'll I, add it's... it to my list, but I find that kind of off-putting since I'm scared of long legs. And that's why my legs are very short. 
Oh, see, I got that joke. If Simon was here, he would have been like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd be like, wait, are they being for real right now? Yeah. And then I just would have gone along with it. I don't, I don't like this. We need you to go back to being your gullible. Gaslight, girl, keep yeah. gate boss. Gate boss? <laughs> yeah, I say it backwards because I'm Australian, you know. Oh, that's true. Speaking of yeah. Australian, um... Chalky updates. I did get a cherry <gasps> ripe, and I fucking loved it. Really? Have, of course, I okay. love cherry ripe. Um, and they had the box for something called berry ripe, which oh. I assume is like a berry version of it. But then, have you ever heard of a pinky? Mm, no. Is it a candy from Australia? It is. Hang okay. on. I can hear something. I heard a cat. Yeah. I think it might be Brenda wondering where I am because I'm usually in bed. <laughs> oh. Brenda! Is that you, baby, or is it Keith? Because I can't actually hear either of you. Um, Pinky, right, is mm. fucking lovely. It's a, um, like a long stick of pink marshmallow. And it's quite a, it's not a gooey marshmallow, it's quite a bouncy marshmallow. And it's got caramel on the top and then it's got chocolate around it. It's got Cadbury chocolate. Ooh, okay, I'm I'm intrigued. Oh, I see the packaging for it. Yeah, oh, I think I've had something like this. Yeah, it looks, it does look familiar. This is now a chocolate podcast. Oh god, I love chocolate. How can you not? Oh my god, I love Kipling's. Oh, what are <gasps> they called? Uh, uh, something delight. No. Mm. Right. I know all the Mister Kipling shit. Okay, oh so you God, would know they, what I'm talking they about. They do a pinky like chocolate bar, and it's got like bits of marshmallow in it. But it's obviously Australia has the best candy. What's some interesting candy? We really do. So, Mr. Kipling, he's a cakey man. Do you like the French fancies? I think it's the French fancies. Yeah, the, little, the ones the little squares, and they've got a blob on the top. Yes, yes. Okay. So I like the Halloween one. Oh, the I, orange! Oh! Yes, I think yes! those are delicious. And so, then we. The, mm. the, right, just to interject, right? I look forward to Halloween because of all the fucking <laughs> chocolate and cake they have. The, the, everything is orange flavored. It's orange. Yeah. Because apparently Halloween equals orange. And then they've got the. My mouth's watching. And they've got. <laughs> <laughs> you catch yeah, the yeah. crash the draw. They've got the, the chocolate orange like slices, and then you've got Cadbury's pumpkin patch things, and um, you've got these like they're like chocolate rolls, but they've got like honeycomb flavoring in them. Oh, okay. Bonfire yeah. logs. Yeah, that sounds. I mean, the 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 definitely the Kipling ones like are so goddamn delectable. I I For real, man. like whatever they put at the top, whatever that cream filling is. <gasps> oh my god! The oh cake my god. is just so well made. I'm sorry. Yeah, it Sponsor tastes like Mr. it's just been made. Sponsor you know I mean? Mr. Kipling. I need you. Please, Mr. Kipling. Oh Jesus Christ, Mr. Kipling! I love you. Is there a Mrs. Kipling? <laughs> oh. Mm, mm, mm. Uh. And also, by the way, the French fancies, they have the, the fiendish fancies, which are for Halloween. They have, yeah. um, a, like, Easter fancies, which are, they look like little eggies. They look like little eggs. They have okay. frosty fancies for Christmas. Um, Jesus Christ. Mr. Kipling, you are, you, the, honestly, the best thing about Britain. <laughs> so they do. So they do, like, multiple... Right, I see. So the ones that I think that I gravitate to, towards are the French fancies, because I'm looking at the Battenbergs, and I think I've tried those before. A slamming. I love Oh, and the angel slices as yes. well. Yes. They're yeah. so soft and nice. So what else did you get? You got the fiendish fancies. So I liked, I tried last night the French, the, the standard French fancy. Mm. So like the, the chocolate coated one, the vanilla coated one and the strawberry coated one, yes. which are just lovely. Um, but I, me and Joe recently made from scratch pineapple tarts. 
what the fuck? I know. <sighs> I know. And oh my god, they slapped so hard. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. That- <laughs> yeah, it's it was quite the because that's what he wanted for his birthday, and I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll make him from scratch. How hard can it be? <laughs> that's adorable, though. Like, so yeah. how did you do? It was are they like little jam tarts with? So you need to do. You need to get the pastry. You need to get like pineapple jam. So you need to put like a layer of that. Can you hear the and cat? Then- Hang on a second. Who is it? <laughs> Which one of you is it? Carry on. I'm listening to Which this recipe. Which one of you is? Uh, so you need pastry, you need some jam, uh, some pineapple jam. You need to make the, so you know the yellow topping, that's icing. So you like food dye <gasps> that, know, you color I, dye that. I know the one. Yeah. And then the actual cream <laughs> is just cream that you have to just whip up basically. Fucking It's really amazing. not that hard, but it's like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Delicious. Oh, Jesus, Je- Je- Jesus Christ, G- <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is this is now a uh, a dessert a, a dessert yeah. podcast. I do enjoy the lemon tarts that are basically like you've got a, a a a little pastry cup and it's got lemon curd in it and then it's got icing on the top that's lemon flavored. Ooh. God damn it, good shit. But if if you wanted to talk about films, we could. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could. So, um, many of you may remember or don't remember. Don't blame me if you've forgotten. But the last episode we did, The Hidden, the movie that got chosen by the dice gods was Perfect Blue. Yes. Which just, yeah, it so happens to be this episode. So, I personally haven't watched this since March. And neither is Booth. But (laughs) we've still got our notes. And I think I, this is going to be a really exciting way of doing it, and I think this, we should do this every time. Yeah, <laughs> just watch it like months ago, and it's like, yeah. oh, how much do you actually remember? Because all of us tend to watch the film a day or two before recording, so it's kind of like really fresh in our minds. But I have the movie on the side, and like I said, I've seen this movie multiple times, and I know it fairly well. So, shouldn't be too much of a problem. But we'll see. We shall see. Sorry, I was eating. I, the talk of um, cake really got me. Oh, she's a Norman. Mm. It's just a Belvita, though. Oh, but Belvita. I, I'm having my fangs made into veneers um, now. Right. Oh, so what are you gonna like shave them down and put the like put veneers there? So I've had the the prep done, where they shave them down. Mm. They're not pegs, right? But then they right. put they put like a temporary they put temporary teeth on, and because they're temporary, they're meant to come off. But teeth aren't meant well, to be might. that long. Yeah. Yeah. So they've fallen off. <laughs> oh. Okay. One fell off. I went back to the dentist, she fixed it, she put another one on. Next day, the other one fell off. I was like, fuck it. Well, how long How long does it take to get the moulds done? Like, two weeks? So, yeah, they send them off to a, a guy who makes them out of porcelain. Just so, some guy in a back alley. Um, I don't know, he, can... he just <laughs> chips them out of a toilet. Yeah. He's like... <laughs> and then, so... My teeth are super sensitive at the moment, and, and I'm like, oh... I've got one fang still, but it's made, it's made out of like Play-Doh or something. I don't know. I, you can call me toilet teeth when I get them. I'm yeah. cool with that. Oh my god! <laughs> I just the image of a guy chipping a toilet to make him teeth. <laughs> <laughs> she could have gone with like you know bathroom sink, but no, she toilet. immediately <laughs> toilet. You see the toilet. Um, you, you are just you're something else so my teeth oh. are quite sensitive and sore at the moment so I'm yeah. having to kind of be really careful I'm eating this Belvita and sweet things are making one of my teeth sensitive and I, I'm really upset yeah I <laughs> did that story. once after a teeth clean I obviously because it takes off like a layer of enamel or whatever you know the, whatever mm. was there that was protecting your gums or the or things the you know all the yeah. dirt. 
I remember drinking like a soda, like not long after the appointment. And oh my God. Oh my God. It was so painful. The dirt that's holding my teeth together, all the plaque. <laughs> Clean that off. And it's just like, what the fuck? It, what is down here? <laughs> <laughs> potty mouth brings a whole no. new meaning to oh, potty mouth. That's that's too clever. Hey, hey! Oh god. Okay, back back to this movie. So you'd seen it before we we watched it for you, right? Yeah. yeah, I've I've seen it a couple of times, but it not for a really long time. Yeah, and so watching it for Yomp was like. I was so on board because I loved it back then, but I only remembered like a specific scene. <laughs> oh, mm. do I want to know which? Uh... I just remembered the rape. Of course. Okay. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So, th- so anyone who may have not seen it or whatnot, like we're just gonna do spoiler. You know, we're not gonna chronologically outline what happens from start, middle to finish. We're just gonna just gonna talk about all the events but this is a pretty pretty intense movie so um um, i mean trigger warning if you need it there is mentions of sexual assault uh stalking um what else there's a lot of heavy anime there is going to be talk Uh, about anime uh, spoiler uh, warning trigger warning anime (laughs) (laughs) filthy weebs bruh but yeah, it's it's got a lot of yeah pretty heavy themes, but it's yeah it's it's a good film. Like it's I don't fantastic. know, I, I, just, I just like fucked up films, you know. Oh, but within reason, you know within do. reason, yeah, within within reason. Not not just like doing fucked up shit and showing fucked up shit for the sake of it. Like hmm. there has to be some reason why your why a certain thing is happening, which is why I don't like a whole a lot of the a lot of like horror movies and like the Saw movies, for example, because it just just feels like you know gore porn for the sake of it, right? It is, and that's what the new Terrifier. I mean, Terrifier. Have you heard of that? I have, but I've I've seen like like screenshots of the clown himself and whatnot, but I yes. don't know anything else about it. It's worse than Saw in the the sense that there is, I cannot find any discernible story in there. Like, it's it's absolute dog shit. Um, Really? Wait, so so there's three of them because obviously the third one has come out. I think just recently. Recently, so you've you've seen the other two. I've seen the first one, and um, I was talking to my dentist about this actually. (laughs) It's nothing great, (laughs) and she was like. She's she said she's she's a she's got a Yorkshire accent as well. So she's it's just this clown going around with a, with an axe just chopping people up and I don't get it. My son is ten, he won't make me see it. He wanna he, she talks so fast as well. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, basically it's a slasher movie where a clown kills people. Right. And okay. the whole selling point is that it's so gross that they have they hand out like sick bags and one what? place had an ambulance stationed outside because people leave people walk out of the film like quite often because it's disgusting and they'll report like oh someone someone vomited in the cinema and it's like yeah you've just you've just convinced me to never fucking like get, no okay yeah never and some yeah. people apparently are loving it because they love going to the cinema to be fucking grossed out and mm. I don't I personally I do not get it I watched the first one I was like that was terrifyingly bad I can't remember what I actually wrote for it but I did write it on on Letterboxd uh, if I go to terrifier it just it just it's gross like I understand like in some of the old horror films like when a scene was a bit like gross it didn't really look visceral because obviously you could tell that it's like props and makeup and it, it wasn't like it's was supposed to look gross but not like over the top mm. you know what I mean I, I wrote I watched it the first one in 2022 so the first Terrifier came out in 2016 I wrote, it's 99p to rent on Prime and it wouldn't be worth it. It was broadcast (laughs) on free TV and I want a refund. (laughs) SFX are okay. Art does a good job of being creepy at the start, but it's boring. (laughs) But I just... 
yep. I don't get I, I hated it. The fact oh, that, that it was on TV right. as well. I never heard of it up until like uh, the last week because the third one is out and I've been seeing people really like it and I'm like, okay, sure. I wonder yeah. if it's any any good, but I mean, I'm going to take your word for it. It's sounds... not good because like, I think people are uh, say, I don't even like it because of the outrageous gore. It's just pointless. Yeah. It's just so fucking pointless. And yeah, I don't like, like, I know the whole point of like a movie like Saw especially is like, you people are shit. And you know what you did, so I'm going to put you through some fucked up trials and tribulations, and you're going to fuck each other up and cut off flesh and put it in jars and put it on scale. Like, I get it, but it's like, you can only go so far, you yeah. know, with, with that concept. And it just, I'm, I'm just not here for it. If you, if you like that shit, fine, fair enough, whatever, but... I'm over it, you know. I, I, so I, I, I like, I want psychological, you know, there's a reason for why this thing is shaped like this, there's a reason why this person's seeing these images, there's a reason, why, you know what I mean? Like, it needs to be clever. And I feel like when you're just solely depending on gore, which yeah. again is fine, it's and, fine. You, know, and you might want it to be mindless, which again is fine, but I want something clever, you know what and I mean? Any, or charming in any particular way like <laughs> I feel like you know slasher movies are gory but I want them to be inventive there's limits though you know what I mean like if you're just if it's just gore for the sake of it you know what I mean like mm. with Jason in the Friday movies like yeah he'll fucking stab someone with a spear if two teenagers are getting it on or he'll chop off someone's head and, it's, and then he just moves on or like yeah. with, with with Michael, he does the same thing. He just chops something off, doesn't play with his food, and then fucks off, right? He just continues yeah. on with his day. Bring back silent protagonists. I don't want to hear yeah. them talk, well, okay? Art doesn't say anything. He doesn't actually say anything in this oh, whole film either. Oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah, so he, I don't really fucking understand anything. And he's he's fairly creepy, but that's it. Like, I don't, I don't. I don't rate it as a right. unless as like a film. you're yeah. I mean, it may, we were saying this on soft focus when we watched Beetlejuice. Slight plug there for my channel. Um, I told people, I spoke people to G will about want to know this. Yeah, yeah. We, we did an episode. So uh, I spoke to G about Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice uh, for my channel, my YouTube channel, and we were saying the cinema experience is so different uh, in that. Like, you will have a completely different perception of the film, whether you're watching it at home or whether you're watching it in the cinema. Yeah. So I may have been thinking, Terrifier is incredibly fucking boring, but in the cinema I could be like, call me an ambulance, Terrifier is incredibly boring, and I've died. Yeah. My heart yeah. stopped. I feel like the cinema in, like... I, I don't know how what other word to use to describe it. It's kind of gaslighting in a way because it's yeah. You've, you've done this whole song and dance of getting ready, going out for a meal before or after. Like you've made this whole uh, whole ordeal to go to the cinema. So you know when you're there and you're surrounded by people and everyone else is laughing and clapping and you know no. whatever you you're in that you're immersed in that. So you kind of yeah. feel like you're in it together. Um, but when Definitely. you're watching something on your own, it's you don't really have anyone to bounce off of and you, there's nothing to read in the room, right? Yeah, which is why I think that I have such a very strange perception of a lot of films because I, I, I obviously have got a collection of films that I can watch on my own. And I, I do watch them with people sometimes. Mm. Um, but I, I have a, a very pure uh, like perspective on that. You know, because I don't like mm. going to the cinema because people fucking suck. Well, um, people suck. And also, I feel like it has to be something that I really desperately want the amazing you know, silver screen experience for. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I want to have a like this big screen with surround sound and I want to eat some popcorn and drink a shitload of soda. And, you yeah. know, it's a, it's a nice thing, but I feel like it's, you know, not a thing that. Ha I mean, for me personally, not a thing that has to happen constantly because I think no. it, it'll the magic will just 
Did, did I tell you about Fade. one of my most magical cinema experiences? No. Uh, <laughs> I did the same thing. All right, so in Milton Keynes, there's the uh, the big cinema was in the the Snowdome, which was like a it was a new new thing, and um, they had an Ask Italian restaurant in the same building. So I went out and I got spaghetti carbonara, and I went with I can't remember whether it was with my friends the first time or with my dad. Mm. Uh, watched War of the Worlds with Tom Hanks. And uh, I had a panic attack, uh, but I had a nice time anyway. You know, I had to stand in the toilets for half an hour. But then th I think it was like a week later, I went and I had carbonara <laughs> in Ask. <laughs> and then I went to watch War of the Worlds <laughs> with my dad and had another panic attack at the same point in the film. She's like, take two. Let's see if we can do this I again. Fucking love it. I'm a glutton for punishment. Anyway, yeah, that's a great film. It scared the shit out of me. Um, oh my god, how old were you? When did uh, when did it come out? Uh, War spelt with an O. War of the Worlds. Tom Hanks. Uh, Tom Cruise. 2005. I would have been 16. Oh, I was like, bruh, you were like, oh, I watched World of the Worlds with Tom, with Tom Hanks. And I'm like, Tom okay, just hilarious. shut up, just shut up, G. You've clearly not seen this. So you clearly are like the odd one out here. Don't correct Did her. Did you think there I was must... going to be w watching the War of the Worlds in 1953? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> I, I thought this was like some other rendition because there's so many renditions of this right there's like a i think there's a strip there's a stage performance as a there is yeah there's like so many so i'm like okay clearly there has to be one with tom hanks out there <laughs> I, would, I would love that Imagine. Yeah. can we have it like um where uh he plays every part like in the polar <laughs> express i want it to be cgi really bad and we have to have the nerd in it as well and he can, play, he can play the, uh, he can play Nathaniel, uh, the priest, <laughs> and he's standing off to the fucking thing and he gets vaporised. I just want to see that nerd vaporised and Tom Hanks going, oh no! Is it bad that I thought of, when I thought of Tom Hanks, I thought of the Polar Express as well, which is yeah. terrible because he's known for so much more, but <laughs> I don't the think... Polar Express, it's, it's I... scarred us. Yeah. Well, I mean, you oh could have God. him in, in Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. Chocolates. Mm. You never know when you're going to get a small, simple virus and end up <laughs> killing off an entire race of alien beings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what part of the movie in War of the World, the one with Tom Cruise, that would have given you a panic attack. I but I haven't it, seen that in a long time, so, I, you know. Uh, it was the bit where they first start showing up maybe right like where they like where there's that storm and stuff i think i was mm. starting to feel a little bit there was a lot of rumbling in <laughs> in the cinema rumbling <laughs> what i think uh, tom cruise in the green mile uh would stop been a very stop. good Wait. Mr. Jingles, get away from there. Uh, oh my Mr. god. Mr. Jingles, no, we're gonna have to put you to death, alien. Oh my lord, she's got her wires crossed. It's Doesn't fine. Doesn't know what she's saying. He went to a Zoltar machine and wished he was big and he turned out into a massive tripod and uh, <laughs> had sex with a lady even though he's like 10. Oh no, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, oh god. Okay, so Perfect Blue. Perfect, oh yeah, remember that movie, Perfect Blue. I remember. So we're not going to do chronological. This happened at this point. This is the scene. Blah blah blah. But we might synopsis. end up doing it just by accident anyway. Yeah, but not like consistent chronological. Just just more a case of like, yeah, this is this scene and blah blah blah. But TLDR, it's a movie about a girl who is in a girl band i guess a pop idol band uh called cham and she wants to break out and do stuff on her own um, she wants she to wants graduate and go solo yeah she wants to she wants to i think move into acting mm. um so she's got a, a manager and she's got like a talent agency um that you know manages cham and also is like trying to find stuff for her as well 
Um, she has a fan um, that we suspect because he acts, you know, really intense and very creepy and very weird. Mm. And we we suspect that it's him because he, you know, just if he, every time there's like a, a public scene, he's looming in the background. Um, he, he runs a website, um, I think called Me Mania. Yeah. So we assume yeah. that this man is obsessed with her and yeah. is stalking her and making her feel uncomfortable because he's always hanging around and because he looks creepy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Different. He doesn't look right. Yeah. He's drawn in the way of an anime where you know he's one of the main characters because he's yeah. sort of like the, you know, he's got more detail than the, <laughs> the people around him. Yeah. 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 He looks, he definitely, he stands out. Yeah. Um, so he defends her when people, you know, in the crowd are like saying, oh, you know, why are you leaving the, 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 the girl band group? And, you know, he runs a website called Me Mania where I think he like pretends to be her. Like he talks as yes. if he's like her. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, like, he's, he's writing it like it's a diary. Uh, yeah, like, like oh, I to- went to the train station, I bought this, and and oh, you know, I he he does he say like um does it write like oh I'm I regret I I'm really gonna go back to being in the band or something yeah like, yeah it, it's like he's projecting what he wants to happen he's manifesting yeah. it. Yeah, he's he's disgruntled because he's I think he's trying to in his own head canon convince himself that she doesn't want what she's actually choosing to do which is leave uh the girl band and move mm. into acting and like do more adult things because she's this like innocent picture of you know whatever and moving into acting means doing naked scenes and more raunchy things or more adult things and he doesn't want that and he thinks yeah. that probably her fans probably don't want that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the the thing about idol groups in Japan is that the the scene is very pure, um, perfect. Like it's frowned upon to have a boyfriend publicly, um, mm. and like they'll be punished if they do certain things. And eventually they they graduate out of the band and they have like a big ceremony saying, oh, you know, you're moving on congratulations it's like when they get to mm. a certain age even you can't be too old and be yeah. in this band so they have a rotating cast of mm. of members and this is only a small group there's three girls in three it, of so them, it's, yeah. but they have to replace her and uh yeah so it's it's sort of like they 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 don't allow them to Well, they didn't have... even replace her right she just sort of like i think it was just the two of them uh, by the it, end of yeah. it I yeah. think it was because they did get a successful single, didn't they? The they did, yeah. And she was like looking on like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have left and yeah. kind of doubting herself a little bit. But yeah, it was kind of... I didn't know that stuff though about how if they if they get a bit older, they kind of like, yeah. you know, do a whole song and dance for them this, when they this leave. Is, this is like... Um... I'm surprised because you are the weeb uh, between I am. us. And I am, yeah, I, I don't, to, I don't I love to... idol stuff, you know? No, I, I went out with a guy and he's still a really lovely friend and we used to just watch AK Bingo, um, mm. AKB 48s, like... We used to watch a lot of Japanese game shows together and he's so into his, like, idol groups. He has his favourites... Oh. He has their little cards that he takes to get like pictures signed and stuff. He is full. Of, he is so weeby G. Like, right. I love him, but my god, he has the little, the little I anime love him, figurines. But he needs a fucking intervention, is what she's I'm trying to say. I'm gonna give him an intervention. I do <laughs> really need to. Um, but yeah, I used to watch AK AK Bingo, and um, it's like I would. I had my favorite. Out of them, all of them, but there was like a group, mm. this massive group of girls, and it would be like, oh, she's she's graduating. Um, well, some of them have like twenty something members. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, so what the? F- how can you keep up with that kind of stuff? What do you mean? Oh, anyway, yeah, so they they graduate and they move on, and then sometimes they go into comedy or they have a solo career or they go into acting. So it's something that happens. You know, mm. fairly regularly, but they mm. they don't. They're not allowed. Like there was a girl that. She was found on a date 
or she had a boyfriend or was talking to a boy and she had her head shaved as punishment. <gasps> Something like that. Like They really bully these girls. It's not a healthy thing Jesus to go through. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, they as much as it's like heavy themes and like, you know, they show a lot of like intense stuff in the movie, that is not something that is like touched on at all. Like they focus yeah. on all the other stuff, which is the stalker situation and how she's going through some weird little psychosis herself. M Minami Mi Miniyashi, um, AKB48, shaved her head to apologize for breaking the band's no dating rule. Um, <gasps> she spent the night at, at the apartment of a dancer in a boy band. And then there was photos of her sneaking out of the building with a mask and sunglasses. She cried in a YouTube video and then uh, she said she didn't want to leave the band. She shaved her hair to show contrition. So, that's uh, so and then she was fuck. demoted to a trainee team. So that was in 2013, and uh, they they basically like it's it's not. I mean, I don't know whether it's changed since then, but it's it was it's not a healthy thing. There are a lot of things in Japan that we see as quite like a fun little. Haha, it's so fun. Ha, kawaii, um, uwu, but in reality, uwu, it's... In reality, it's really quite, like, misogynistic. Like, the, the maid cafes and stuff, and it's like... Yeah. There's a lot of issues. I wish yeah. they... I kind of wish, but I mean, I guess it's not the point of this film, because there's there's the bigger picture of what is actually going on in this film and who is actually the antagonist. Yeah. Right? So I don't think it would have worked in the way that you've described because of who is actually behind everything, if that makes sense. Yes. You know what I mean? Because they're, they're this loving, caring, you know, I'm going to take care of you type person. So if they were outwardly um, being mean to her or like punishing her in any way, they, they would have been suspicious on that person, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of makes sense. But there's, yeah, so there's a couple characters to take note of. There's Mima, which is the, the main character. There's Mimania, which is the guy who stalks her. Um, and then she's got like her managers. Um, there's like two people that manage her. Uh, and she's also got idol Mima, which yes. is basically her in her idol era idol um costume and she kind of sees idol mima in like her reflection yeah on a, on trains and like she has like weird dreams about her i think as well yeah it's like she's yeah. hallucinating and sort of like thinking about what what it would be like if she was still idol mima i think yeah yeah um and she starts off like where the, she's doing her last concert and she's very nervous um but in the version i watched they actually dubbed the music to be english <gasps> english yeah <laughs> sounded weird uh personally <laughs> yeah I'd, i was like that's a choice yeah for sure because i it didn't it didn't it doesn't work in english does a lot of like you when when it's Sung in Japanese, it's like, oh, this is this is oh, great. It sounds it's, so kawaii, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it sounds right, doesn't it? Like, yeah. Um, and they just kind of like, it seems like they put it together for this, and it was sort of last. Not, it just wasn't a big thought there. Um, mm. Yeah. So she, um, so she leaves the group. She um, gets opportunities to do acting, um, you know, be on a movie or a TV show, do more like adult things, basically. It's Me Mima's Room. Is the, is the <sighs> website, maybe? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. And Mimania is the guy um, yeah. who, uh, who writes the blog, who is like, it seems like it's blaringly him yeah um, you think, that's oh, causing this guy's issues because he's tall yeah tall cool <laughs> and a bit strange looking yeah um yeah. and uh and then she gets the job to be the i like the fact that her mom has a southern american accent i wrote down yeah 
Yeah, like she's from the country uh, yeah. in Japan, but they gave her like some weird American ones. Oh, okay, sure. Whatever you say. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, so she, I think, once she leaves the band, she gets a threat. Yeah. Um, from Me Mania. So I think it's like a phone call. Um, and then, like, a she gets like a f- phone call. It's like breathing. Yeah. And then the facts. I love it. Facts. The facts, yeah. Uh, calling her a traitor. Um, so there's clearly somebody out there who's not happy with her leaving and like, you know, pursuing acting. Um, mm. And then obviously the big one where she's on like a set of a, a movie or TV show and um, there's a letter and it's it's addressed to her, but somebody else opens it and there's a freaking bomb in it, which I think mm. I think kills someone, right? Or kills or severely injure, injure someone. Yeah, I think it, it injures someone at least. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, does the police the police weren't called? Uh, and someone said it's just a prank. <laughs> it's thinking, just a prank, bro. Yes. Yes, that's sad. <laughs> it's hilarious. And look, oh, I lost all my fingers. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. Just God, prank, let's bro. take a joke. God damn it. Ugh. Um. So the writer has no ideas as well for this. Uh, uh, the next one will be real. Wrote. Uh, was oh, written in, it in the letter. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, and Rumi is her manager, who's a lady, isn't she? Yeah. So she's got um, like two, but Rumi's the one who I think used to be in a girl band as well. Yeah, and, and she's then... very hands-on in helping. Yeah everything out um yeah and she's teaching us how to use the internet as well she's because they found this website and she's like oh that's really weird and Rumi's like no it's fine yeah because she's like oh you know what's uh, mima's room and she's really excited and how do i get the internet and how do i work it how do i get on here and and Rumi's like oh you're useless like oh you know i'll set it up for you type deal yeah. um and then yeah, and then she she gets onto the website and it's just like written from like it's written from Mima's perspective as if she's the one who's saying I went to the train station today and I bought myself this and I ju- I jumped over the gap like this and just like really specific stuff that she actually did do. Yeah. Right? So somebody's clearly like, stalking her. I don't remember writing this. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, I haven't written this, but I did do these things. Yeah. So what the hell's going on here, you know? It's it's a scary thing. Um, And there's voice clips of her practicing and stuff, so it's somebody that's there, which is weird, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't remember... I don't remember... <laughs> I've written things down in my notes, and I'm like... The oh, fuck is this? <laughs> You're just like, what was seven months ago, Sophie on about? What was I thinking, man? Yeah. Was there a hit and run of one annoying fan? Was there a what? Sorry, a hit and run. Uh, I don't think so. No. So am I making be- shit up again? I don't. I think the hit and run stuff is like at the end. Like I think there was a uh, couple. I've written it down in this. In my notes, of, uh... I don't. I nothing comes to mind about <laughs> hit and run. I remember like there's like a street incident, you know, near the end. Yeah. Mm... Oh well. Um. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play so, sh- it. so so we've only got one suspicion at this point that it's me mania. That yes. is, you know, he works as like security for Cham. Um yeah. She sees like a newspaper clipping about like the heckler. Like, cause there, there were like hecklers there who were like, "Oh, you know, why are you leaving?" Oh no, you're right. No, yeah. there was a hit and run. No, you're right. Yeah, right. Don't yeah you. the heckler from her last. Yeah, I've written it down. Heckler from her last Cham concert is in critical condition after a hit and run. Yeah, and you're yes. like, "Oh shit!" So th- because this guy was getting mad at the fans in the first place, you're thinking, "Oh shit, is he injuring people now?" Like, what yep. is this? going on um yeah 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 but it's fine because uh cham got in the top 100 after hey, she left yeah. or before right yeah after she left. <laughs> hey. So, hey, congratulations um, um good news it's, it's like it's always nice to see people succeeding after after you've gone yeah i kind of felt a little bad for her in a way because it's I like did. 
Because it's like, oh, it kind of feels bad a little bit, you know? Because she was with yeah. them for a little bit and they never managed to. They never you know. managed to break into the top 100. Which yeah. is it's sad. Um, so, so there's a couple of things that like really intrigue me about this movie in general because it really, like, throughout the whole film, it keeps you guessing. Yes. It it there's there's like there's multiple suspects in the sense of like could it be this person, could it be me mania, could it actually be Mima because she sees what I mentioned before idol she, Mima. Yeah, is she mentally ill? Is the is she is dissociating? What is going? Yeah, what is going on? Like, is she actually writing the blog? You know, like yeah. is she like disassociating, writing the blog, and her alter ego? wants to have stayed in cham and yes. and you know not have left and gone into acting and it's it, she, her psyche is like protesting you know what yeah. i mean exactly um, and that was that was these were all the things that i was thinking about as i was watching as well it's, it's does it really well yeah like it i think i remember when the first time i watched it i was like i have no clue who is behind uh, any of this this is really because it it really does a good job of convincing you that it could be anyone because she 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 disassociates quite a, a fair amount yeah so she actually it, genuinely does it's not like as in like oh we're, we're just sort of making we're, we're sort of like pretending we're thinking that it does and that she's not actually doing it yeah but she yeah. is mentally suffering from from what's going on yeah. as well mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it does a really good job of like making you think all sorts of things. Um, yes. Because with someone who's like any character in any movie or TV show who is an unreliable narrator or somebody who's like disassociating, you don't, you can't trust what they're seeing. You can't trust what they're saying because they could be having an episode. You know what I mean? They could be yep. making stuff up and you're seeing the movie or whatever it is through their eyes so you you know it yeah. give, it keeps you on your toes um but yeah so she sees idol mima for the first time in a reflection um this is after the sexual assault <laughs> scene on the tv show or movie or whatever it is yeah so uh she's got this she's got a rape scene um in in the show that she's filming, she's she's not a big part in the in the show yet. No, um, but no, that, yeah. that's why they're trying to convince her. Like this is, you know, it's actually a really big break to to do this sort of scene. It'll it'll make you a big deal. Yeah. Um, and she's still being um, hassled by fans saying, you know, like, oh, do they all get? so uppity and they don't want to talk to you as soon as they get an actress and then people are scouting us to be but like you know and another thing I found was like the you know when she's actually filming the show and the scenes yeah. you're not sure whether it's actually happening there it's like you're not sure which is in the which is in the, the show that she's filming Oh, this real. is like later on, right? Like, so I think there's there's scenes later on when she's filming. So this is when she gets like her permanent, more permanent position on the TV show, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah, and she just kind of starts. There's still bits like where she's um, in general, like she's she's being hassled by men in the show, and she's being hassled by men out of the show as out well. Out of the show, yeah. Um, the, um, but yeah, she's. Uh, She's not keen on doing this this rape scene, this sexual assault scene. Well, that's um, what that's what that's what creates the idol, Mima. Yes, like that that's the tipping point there, which obviously says a lot because she she pretends like she's okay, she pretends like she's fine with it. Um, and you know, this is the, this is the sacrifice I need to make in order to take that next step to be taken seriously. I can do this sort of thing, and then yeah, that that's when idol Mima comes about. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of like overlapping uh, things that are going on in the so yeah um, yeah yeah so so that happens. Rumi, who is the female manager, manager um, is absolutely distraught. She's yes. crying. She's not happy. She's like because I think the the male manager 
found the role and said like listen you know there's this role and there's a you know, rape scene and I know it's a bit intense but like it, it'll lead to better things or whatever but yeah. the but Rumi just was not having it she's like you really sh- I don't think you should like this is not good because Rumi's kind of like a I mean with any like with women in general if I had a female manager I'd be like you you feel in your heart and and through their behavior you're like this woman understands me wants to take care of me wants to protect me she gets it very motherly sort of figure well yeah because she used to be she used to be in a girl band like just like uh, Mima and then she transitioned into management so I guess she feels that sort of protection over Mima and the other girls and stuff so hearing and what you said about how they're so pure and innocent when they're in the mm. girl band to, oh, you've got a, this scene to do. So for, for her, she's like, oh, my God, no, like, this is awful. Like, you you shouldn't do this. This is you shouldn't, like, lower yourself to this. You shouldn't have yeah. to do this. And, and yeah. you know, it's always like that you shouldn't be lowering yourself to these standards. Like, yeah. And it's like, well. And and even the actor, the actors that are doing the scene with her apologizing about it. Yeah, you know, they're they, super they like professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They respect her and, and everything about it. It's a completely professional thing and it's all acting. And um, you think that Rumi's crying because she doesn't like seeing this happen in general as well. She, well, she, she doesn't she, like she, seeing think... Mima upset. Well, yeah, because obviously, like, just in general, like, without, like, this is obvious, but it's obviously a very troubling thing to watch to, to, it's, you know, so for, for anyone, it's probably very jarring, but as a, as an actor, as a professional, it's not real, right? It's just, you know, it's, but, but for, but for people who have known her for her whole life and I mean, even for Mima, she wouldn't have created idol Mima if she was okay, really you know what i mean yeah absolutely and um so it's all getting a bit messy and you're all a bit worried about things um and you see that her fish have died in in her house she's been so neglectful about no i think did they die or were they missing something happened to the yeah because i can't remember if they're missing or they're dead I, I, I struggle because again it's been, it's been a while but yeah the, the fish go missing or they're dead and there's clearly been they're some dead, neglect they're floating there. around so she's either they've either been killed or she's neglected them so something's happened and she's really upset so you, you're wondering yeah. whether she's neglected them or somebody might have done something to the fishies yeah like the stalker um, mm. me mania and she mm. trashes her room she's really upset like mm. Uh, everything like she's got loads of nice little teddy bears and stuff and it feels like you know she's ripping all this stuff away she's she's upset <laughs> she's mm. bad mm-hmm. um so the 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 diary uh is there's, there's something like somebody saying you're a filthy woman now like a slut that's her hallucination saying that. Yeah. So it's like her hallucination is is like telling her like if it's her a psyche that's saying you're a slut now. You can mm. always you know you 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 tainted basically. Yeah. You are no longer the pure innocent Mima from Cham. Yeah. Yeah. Um and yeah, so she's being harassed. As she's saying, like her loosening is saying, no one likes you anymore. You're tarnished. You're filthy, and you're not sure whether this is, um, it, like, whether whether this is just a represent representation of a psyche, even um, at this stage, or a split personality. Really, yep. you know what I mean? Yeah, because you do yeah, start to think because she's not even a reflection anymore. She's like in person at that point. Yeah, yeah. And yeah she's so doing- she- Things that are weird, like a bit weird and floaty at first, but then she still, like starts doing stuff that's real. And you're like, "Fucking hell! Did I? Did I do that? Did I say that?" 
Uh, but yeah, so so she has a confrontation with Idol Mima. So Idol Mima has manifested from just being a reflection that yeah. she at first was just catching, you know, in the train glass window in, you know, when she was looking at the fish and now she's like in person being like, you're tainted, you're terrible, nobody likes you. Yeah. Um, and she will be the light and Mima's in the shadow. So she will be the the the, the better Mima, you know, because yeah, yeah. cause the, the current Mima is shit. And, she's tainted. And she's tainted her whole persona and image at this point. Yeah, she's crap. Okay. She's crap. Nobody likes her. Um, I think, yeah, then we move on and we find out, or we just see, we don't see who does it, but we, it could be literally anyone, but one of the writers on the show that she's on, Double Bind, g- gets murdered while the yeah. Cham song is playing. Yeah. Um, like, I think he's, like, leaving for the day and he's going into the car park and he just gets, like, absolutely shanked to death, basically. Yes. Um, yeah. He died, his, his eyes fell out as well. Yeah, which is terrible. rough, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Really what, rough. What the fuck? Um, so yeah, he's he's murdered. Is was he murdered in a lift? I think he was. Yeah, he was yeah. like coming down in the lift because he was like done for the day, and then he did. Uh, and he then he did. just gets he just gets absolutely destroyed. Is Rumi and- still managing Cham as well? Is she? I think they are. Yeah, I think yeah. they're they're still under it because it's the same agency. Yeah, I think so. You're right. Um, yeah. But nobody, nobody takes Mima seriously because she's she's a woman, a girl. Yeah, because you know they they need the adults. I mean, I don't even know how old she is. Um, she must be young though. Yeah, she must be like nineteen. How I'd say. old is Mima in Perfect Blue? Yeah, she, I would say nineteen. Um, uh, it's not specified. <laughs> Okay. Not specified. So classic Cham, Japan. <laughs> Cham does a show, and it's just the duo, right? Uh, but then we see like the idol Mima in her costume mm. dancing, don't we? And yeah. the creepy, the creepy dude is there, and he's like, "Oh, I'm so happy." So you think, like, is he is he seeing this? Is he hallucinating? But then you see the other two girls like reacting. Yeah. To, to idol Mima and you're thinking holy shit is she yeah. really, she's really there yeah and she actually like, she's there made, like what <laughs> yeah made a comeback what is going on so we're getting more and more confusion as we go yeah yeah it definitely starts that's why I'm saying it, it keeps you on your toes because you're just like is he doing it is a Mima doing it is idol Mima is she being idol Mima like is she putting is on she, the dress and yeah then, is she and, genuinely fucking doing the, all of this yeah yeah so you're just like what the what's going on for the longest time I was very I was on the mind track that it was Mima doing all this yeah, yeah. I you was too I mean? um yeah I was thinking like she's having she's split personality she's having a mental breakdown because she's being subjected to so much that she's not quite comfortable with um because she's made to do a she's told to do a photo shoot and the photographer makes girls get nude um, because it's a popular thing to do and it's like the next step and i think it was done in like a sleazy way as well he was like just take a little bit more of your clothing off a little bit more sort of like he he did it in a way that it's not like he wasn't straight up saying, hey, we're going to do a nude photo shoot. Um, it was more, we're going to do a photo shoot. No, it's going to be fine. It might be a bit risque, but nothing too terrible. And Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, for a big, yeah. Like, w- up until that point, like, yeah, the stuff that she was, like, having to do was like, yeah, it's kind of, like, weird champ, but it's in a professional capacity. But he was like, like the using, first... Like using the word weird champ in a professional capacity. Yeah, who the fuck does that? That's not Nobody very cash that. money. That's... Nobody does that. <laughs> it's not very pog. It's, it's not very it. pog. It's very unpog, if you ask very me. Um, but yeah, so he was like the first one who made it weird. But even then, it can it continued to just be like, oh yeah, we'll do a photo shoot. Like nothing really escalated from that. He just sort of gave like weird vibes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, this really upsets the 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 super fan 
me mania. Mm. Uh, he gets really fucking pissed off about the them being like the the magazines being out there, the photos being out there. Yeah, so you think, and she's like oh. half naked and pretty pretty much pretty naked. Uh, yeah, she, actually, she's, she's pretty nude. Yeah, there's tits. There's a bit of bush, um, which is refreshing. Yeah, <laughs> bit of bush is always refreshing. In yeah. These things. Yeah, um, I remember also with the with the with the blog, um, Mima's diary or whatever. Um, there's like certain points where, again, it's like it's talking about help me. I I don't want to do this. I'm being forced to do this. The real Mima is writing this. Um, yeah, you know, like I, I'm basically forced in, yeah. in, in, into all of this. It's just oh my god, it's so brilliant. It it really really does a good job of being like, it oh my really god, it's conf- Mima confuses yeah you as to what is going on. But you see the Mimania, the writer, and he's like his room is covered in pictures of her of Mima. Uh, there's all the magazines stacked up in his tiny little room that yep. he's taken off men, um, and you see Idol Mima hugging him from behind and you're like what the f-? so he's mad is he hallucinating this is like, she what? actually there is she egging there? him on yeah like what the f- you don't yeah mean, because he gets no hugged idea. i totally forgot about that he gets hugged from behind <gasps> that's crazy like yeah is she there you know she, yeah you you have we have no idea this is so confusing and you're like you don't know whether idol mima is even real at this yeah. point there is so yeah. much going on um because she she has like a confrontation with idol meme i mean she has many um but she, like with the one that i can think of was uh, she's like oh you know uh you were you're better off as a pop idol because i think Mima's mm. in the bathroom and idol meme is like you're better off as a pop idol and um she's like are you listening and um She's like, who are you? And Mima's like, I'm an actress. And the like, she's basically having arguments with herself. Yeah. Essentially. Um, in, in the mirror. Yep. Um, and uh, the, the, the guy, uh, Mimania, is, uh, he thinks that she's the, impo- she's the imposter and idol Mima is the real Mima. Yep. So he's, he's confusing everything for us as well it's like is he mentally ill oh he's what the definitely f- menti- mentally oh, well, ill i know come yeah, on but, but, but like to what degree is he mentally ill like the- it's it's incredibly weird um yeah so the she has a dream we don't know it's a dream at the time but like well, she, she's also it's important to note that apparently like, after the photo shoot she becomes even more unhappy as well yeah, yeah. She thought uh, it would make her happy because it's like a road to fame, but it's like yeah. this is the this is the the way that you should be doing things. You know, yeah. you're a pop idol, you're an actress, you do some scenes, take some nude photos, you get rich, mm. you get famous, you do whatever you want. Whereas yeah. she sees herself in this dream where Chama having a radio show and she sees herself there too. Mm. And she chases this hallucination and um she's hit by a truck driven by the weird man and she wakes up. So it's like, like at that stage, I'm like, you're like, did that really happen? Like, what the? F-? Yeah. Because um, she wishes she was back with Cham. I think deep down, um, Rumi's checking the page this this whole time uh, as well. She's checking that blog. She is. Yeah, we get scenes of her like keeping tabs on it, um, like just to again be protective support i mean i say protective but there's not really much she can do because i guess mima will do whatever mima wants to do even though rumi feels a certain way about it right right it's like you know you can't change whatever happens but she's she's like she's on she's on top of it she's like she's almost obsessing over the fact that this is happening like she's watching and then we <laughs> so she's she's acting on set and she sees the weird man. Yeah, it's all it all gets really really confusing here, doesn't it? Because there's like dream sequences, and yeah, she dream wakes sequences, up and, hallucinations. She wakes up in the dream. It's like it's playing out in real life. Um, 
Now she crushes a cup in her hands. Yeah. Uh... Is this after the? Oh yeah, where she? Yeah, yeah. So she there's this. They're, they're filming, mm. um, and then she rushes out onto the street because she's chasing. Yeah, yeah, because she's tra- she's chasing idol Mima. Yeah. Um, and then she gets hit by a truck, but that doesn't again like at that point you're like what the fuck like does that actually happen does she or does she get hit by a truck yeah the, the, so she she's hit she wakes up out of a dream she gets Rumi comes around to for tea and cake but then she wakes up from that dream is that am I am I remembering that right you, no no you're right you're right because and, yeah and then it happens again and it's like what the f- fuck is yeah. going on that's why like, you get thrown through a loop because it's like she's dreaming but then she wakes up and then she, you think she's awake, but in reality, she's not awake. <laughs> and then she, it's like, what the? Uh, f- what else has done that in, um, in cinema? Like, there's so many films oh, that have done that. Yeah, I can't even, I can't even pinpoint. Well, a Final one. Destination for one. Oh, does yeah. it now? Does it, it does do it it well? It, yeah, it does. Like, not you know, not as well as this, but it okay. really does work very well. Where they're like. She she's like they have this premonition mm. about things happening, and then they wake up, and then everything's happening, and they see the same things in their dream mm. that then they see in real life, and that's what makes them go, "No, we're getting out of here. I'm not getting yeah. on that fucking plane." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I'm doing it. So okay. the same things keep happening again and again, um, which freaks her out, obviously. Um, so she crushes the cup and she's like this This is blood is real isn't it like yeah, she knows she she's like, not yesterday, dreaming yesterday was that real uh, cause she's yeah she's having tea with Rumi she's holding again. the tea yeah again even though Rumi was like yeah I've been busy whatever so it's yeah. like is she actually like seeing Rumi has it been months since she's seen Rumi is she tripping balls does she not know like how long time has passed etc cetera, etc cetera. and yeah like a whole she cracks the cup and blood just comes shooting out room, of her hands. Her room is getting messier and messier and her like she's she's reading this blog all the time. Oh my god, yeah. Curtains yeah. shut. She's yeah. it's getting it's getting heavier and heavier. It's, she's uh, like, I guess I went to Harajuku today. As in like she looks so fed up. She looks so done. She looks so depressed dead behind the eyes and she's like well I guess I went to Harajuku today because she's reading the blog yeah she's like oh the the blog says I've been here so I guess I must have done she doesn't yeah. actually know so she doesn't she can't trust what's happening because dreams and disassociating and all this shit is playing it's working against her so she has no idea because imagine you've got a blog out there and it's saying the exact same things that you're doing you know that you've done them especially in the beginning obviously her mental yeah. state's deteriorated a lot and you're like oh shit then. that's that's weird. I did actually go to Costco and buy um, three massive cakes <laughs> and a rotisserie <laughs> chicken and ate it in my car. And <laughs> and I guess I did do that. And then the, the blog is then saying, oh, Sophie actually uh, went down. Um, she went to a club and got in a fight with a bouncer and then took her clothes off and got arrested. Yeah. I was like, shit, I guess I did do that. Yeah. I remember it. She can't trust her her memory. I don't trust her memory. No, you know what I mean. I don't trust what what she's actually perceiving so you, at this point. The 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 film does really uh, expresses this anxiety and this dread really yeah. well. You're so mm. you're in exactly the same confused state as Mima is the whole time. Yeah, that this is going on. But it's it done in a cl- yeah, it's it's done in a clever way. It's not in a way where it's like, oh, this is so left field. No, it's really it's well done. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it's like a twist at the end that's that, that's that left, you haven't left field. seen coming. Yeah, yeah. They haven't seen coming at all. Like there's there's so many different possibilities that it gives you this unease about what's going on, and you're like, I don't know. I like I don't understand this film. Yeah. I don't understand it. And trust me, you have to persevere through these things because everything ties together and makes sense. Um, mm. The show that they're filming also has parallels with what's going on in Mima's life because she's like um, one of the characters 
is saying that um what if the illusions become real she's she fears an imaginary security guard oh yeah so the murder is an illusion she created um and yep. so uh, she fears an imaginary security guard so what if the that she doubles that figure with the serial murderer of top yep. models so, so it's like what if the illusion found someone to possess so now you're thinking oh possession yeah so now the, the this the show has put this in your mind that is there that oh factor my- also, is the show even real? Like, I, yeah. think all, <laughs> I, I don't know whether anything's real anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's all coming back to me because, like, I remember thinking, you know, she's because she, a lot of things happen for her very quickly. Like, yeah, a lot of them are like, oh, you got to do a new this and you, you got to do this. And like, they're not like great things, but they're they are things that like will get her to the point where she needs to be in her like professional acting career. Mm. But you, I, I, at one point, I start to think, is she actually like acting on this show? Is she like actually getting these opportunities? Like, is, or is she things- the, is she the weird man? Yeah, this- yeah. Oh my god! Like, is, is she, she just is she standing around? Is she a fan? That's- yeah. Oh my god, that's what? so cool. Ah! Like, it's all coming back to me. Like, it really does such an incredible job of. You don't know what the fuck is going on. It could no. literally be anything at this point. And it and it holds I was on the edge of my seat right until the the twist. Yeah. Right until the very end because I didn't like it was the first time I watched it, I had no clue. Not yeah. the foggiest idea. I I was I was wrong right up until the reveal. So, yeah, cuz I haven't seen this in such a long time, right? I yeah. I was like I I couldn't remember the the twist. I could only remember the rape and being very confused and really really liking the film. So I remember that I loved the film, but I didn't remember why. Why specifically? Yeah, I yeah, love and a psychological yes horror like this. You know, and I am I am so fucking glad um, that I didn't remember it. Honestly. Oh, so even when you were watching it this time, you were yeah. like, oh, what's, you know, it's been I a while. Still, I don't, yeah. I, so I knew that things were going on, but I didn't quite remember why. So I love it. And um, yeah. then things start getting really heavy because there's another, there's, there's another murder. Murder, yeah. yeah and yeah, it's yeah. a fucking brutal murder of the photographer. Mmm. <sighs> The one who did the nude photo shoot. Uh, so we see a, a pizza delivery. He's watching the show that she mm. is in. He's watching that. There's a a pizza delivery, and it if the delivery guy puts um an ice pick or an, an awl into this guy's eye and into his dick and yeah. his chest and it's like a massive stabbing, stabbing you see the hat fly off and it's Mima um, well she's shaped like Mima right like even yeah. before you see the face you can see it's got her body shape um, yes. yes you know it's, it's just got her yeah you feel like it's her you, yeah you, you're convinced you, it's her and you see that it is, it's, it's Mima and there's Mima's face on the on the screen behind her she wakes up she thinks Fuck, well, as that's she's a horrible stabbing, dream. As she's stabbing him, right? Like, and it's yeah. very brutal. She gets him down, and like her face is on the TV as yeah. she's stabbing him. Um, and and as it, it's got like flashes in her mind of like all of the nude shots from the from the from the shoot that they did. Yes. You know, her boobs, her ass, you know, her bush, everything, everything, her everything, refreshing like bush everything and him on top of her taking the photos and like how weird it was and yeah she's she's just relentlessly laying into him for every single shot that he took and how uncomfortable he made her feel and then it and then she just wakes up she wakes up and but then she gets a phone call saying he's been stabbed and she goes to her closet, and there are the bloody clothes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are paparazzi there. 
at the at the door uh and she goes to she goes to work she's completely unfazed as well when there's loads of flashes going on she's shocked but she's like oh god she goes to work there's a a scene where she has to stab so- someone with an awl and turns out that this guy sits up and it's the photographer and then she wakes up again bro mm. Yeah, yeah, again, it's, it's, it's like, what? It's so confusing at this stage. What is real? What is happening? If there's even any murders going on, the show, the actress in the show says multiple personality disorder. All those crimes took place when she was some other persona. So, again, we're, we're being put loads of different ideas in our heads. So many different ideas. Hmm. And all yeah. the timelines are just completely yeah. like st- all over the shop. They're starting to mesh together because you're just like, yeah, again, is she actually an actress? Is she actually doing these things? Is she just devolving? Is she, yeah, so you, you're, you're all over the place. In You're going crazy with her <laughs> yep. at this point because you're just like, I don't know what to believe at this point. I don't point. know what's going on. I don't know what is real life. She's acting in this drama. Uh, she is. She plays the part of a, a murderer with multiple personalities, and you're thinking, okay. And then she's she's got two personalities. She's a model and an actress in the show that's murdering. She's doing really well at her job now. Everybody's cheering after she does a take. Yeah, um, well, she's getting like consoled by um, Rumi as well after yeah. the whole like murder thing, and Rumi's like got her arm over her, and she's like, I think um, she, Mima's like, oh, you know, maybe the truck actually did hit me, and am I actually alive? Yeah, she's she like, could be she- in a coma. Like yeah. this is like coma dreams, you know, like where those you have those those films where they where it was all a dream, and they were in a coma this whole time. Well, so she's she's at the studio again, and she's like, they're like, oh, you know, we're going to do the next scene. And she's on top of a guy with the pick again. Yeah, I just said that. Yeah. Oh, God. Even I'm disassociating again, this now. Is th- right. This is the thing. Oh. It's so confusing. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, yeah. That... I, I can't keep track of the dreams that she's having. Yeah, and... because there's so many dreams that are going on she wakes up and then it's like she carries on her day and then she wakes up again and it's like what the fuck is happening because it keeps happening yeah uh, yeah wait so do we get to the part where she's on the TV show and they're interviewing her or did we not get there yet we didn't get there yet so okay, we can okay. talk about that yeah um um yeah so so uh okay so she's being interviewed by because we recognize the actress from the show um so she's in her bed she wakes up she's being interviewed by the actress the actress is like you know who are you can you tell me your name she's like i'm mima and the actress in the show is like oh you know um what do you do and she's like oh i'm a pop idol oh no actually i'm an actress and then the actress is like oh that must be hard um, and then she finishes talking to Mima and she talks to the two guys who are looking, who were looking at them through the, through the one way glass. Yeah. Um, and the, the actress is like, okay, so she's got disassociative, disassociative identity disorder. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, I'm convinced that Mima is in a mental, faci- mental hospital. Yeah. And she has pictured the woman that is in the show and the guy, the two lead characters as actors in the show that she's in when, when in reality they're doctors. Yeah. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So she, so she, she wasn't, she wasn't in a TV show. She thought she was in a TV show, but she's got identity disorder. She thinks she's got multiple, multiple personalities, multiple identities. Mima. But she's really Yoko, who was raped and then made it up as a coping mechanism. Yep. Yep. But yep, the yep. show has the lines slightly different. Um, and then the, the show wraps. Like, oh, it's over. Yeah. Um, yeah, it says cut. And then, then there's like a rewind. So it's like, 
But then, but then, but no, no, but then they're, they're like in the editing room. Oh my God, it is so confusing. I don't know if that's like multiple takes, right? Where they're like, oh. Yeah, there was two takes. There was mm. two, two takes of that. And then. Yeah, there were two takes. There were two takes, yeah. Yeah. And then the strange man grabs her. He gets a knife and sexually assaults her. Right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then. Wait, wait when does that happen? I think I'm further along than you are. Well, because they rap and they're like, that's everything. We've got a yeah, round of applause. Are you talking about that? Or because she's walking down and yeah. they're all going to go celebrate. Yeah. Okay. And she's going to the, the, the car park. Oh, and she's yeah. getting the lead actress confused with her character name with as well. With her character. Yeah. She's walking mm-hmm. down the corridor and the, ca- and the actor bumps into her and she's like, I'm not Tuco. Did you forget? Like, I'm. Yeah. And she's like, I'm like, what? And then the then the weird man turns up. Yeah. She, she's like, you should stop dreaming soon. Which again made me think that she's still in some sort of coma or something. Because it's like, why would she say that? Yeah. Why would, so, why would the lead actor say that? Rumi is waiting f- to pick Mima up. And, um, but the weird man's grabbed her and is sexually yeah. assaulting her. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the um, me-mania, me-mania, yeah. Me-mania, so. yeah. yeah. Um, I, and I wrote down, the English voice actor is awful. <laughs> <laughs> that really stuck out. And, and she clonks him with a hammer. Mm. Uh, and he takes it quite well, but he's not there when she shows Rumi. But he's not there when she shows Rumi, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so Rumi comes looking for her because she's like, where the fuck is she? Like, Yeah. Yeah, she's looking for her. And then I think Rumi finds her and Mima's like, her, t- her shirt is torn and... He was saying, like, stop pretending to be Mima. Yeah. Um, but then, right, so does Rumi take her home as well? Rumi finds her. She's like, you're in shambles. What the hell happened? Yeah. Are you, and she's like, are you sure you weren't dreaming? Um, and then they're in, I think she goes to take her home. Yeah. Um, and there's like a shot of Mima and Rumi talking to each other. And she's like, you, you can see, you can see Mima's face and you can see the reflection and you can see Rumi's reflection. And she's like, okay, I'm going to take you back to Mima's room on the drive home. So she's like, she's essentially saying, I'm going to take you home. But that's a weird choice of words. It is, isn't it? I'm going to take you back to Mima's room. Which is the name of... Oh, the blog. Exactly. And the fish, her fish are alive. That's yeah. the thing I noticed. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is, is going on? Like, holy shit. Um, yeah. So then, fucking hell. I'm so, yeah. I'm still confused about what I've written the, down. The, 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 the room is the way it used to be. The room is... Yeah, it's, it's tidy. And she's like, this isn't my room. Yeah, she's like, what the hell? Because she's been living in fucking disarray, right? Yeah. Um, and then she's looking outside, she sees a train. Um, reflections are a big thing in this as well. Um, so she's when she's looking outside at the train, she's like, this isn't... Wait a minute, this isn't my room? Because she she recognises outside isn't her view. Yeah, so it's, she's in a her, different... Yeah, she 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 recognizes the room, but it's not her her current state of room. That and I was like, oh, the fish are alive, and it's like, but her fish are dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know if you catch this, but there's a actually I won't say it now, but there's like a weird there's there's a really clever reflection happening in the corner of the screen that kind of yeah. gives it away if you're really paying yeah. attention. Yeah, which I I don't think I noticed the first time, but she's like, oh my god, this isn't my room, and she sees she turns around and she sees Mima. She she can see herself, which isn't unusual because she's been seeing Mima, idle Mima throughout the film, but she's yeah. got a new she's got a new outfit now. Um, and she's like, where's Rumi? You know, where the hell is where's where the fuck is Rumi gone? And she's like, oh, she's she's gone home, she's gone home. Yeah, she's gone. Don't worry about it. And then. What happens? I forget. Okay, so the, so the reflection. <laughs> there's a mirror on the right. You can the, see in the real version. Her, her manager also dies. No, and the weird creepy guy. Yeah. Well, there's no, two dead the guys. Manager, oh no, because oh. she tries to call. 
She calls. She tries to call Mr. Takakura. Uh, oh, uh, does he die? Oh, yeah, he's dead in her in her wardrobe. You can see like a couple of. She tries to d- phone him. Yeah. And he's not answering, and the creepy guy is also dead. Yes. Everybody's dead. So she's like, yeah, I've caught this is Mima's room. And yeah. the original Mima's like, what the heck? No, it isn't. And then in the reflection, we can see Rumi. Yes. I'm eating Which popcorn, is yeah. her manager. And Mima's like, what the fuck? And then Rumi starts singing. But at this point, I'm still like, wait a minute. Is it actually Rumi? Like, is Rumi sub- the, the, the mastermind? Is are she seeing, the one? Are we seeing what we're supposed to be seeing right now? Yeah, or is, like, again, is Mima projecting? Is she fucking projecting? Is she dissociating? Is she splitting her personality again? Is she is she deflecting it onto Rumi? Like, oh, it can't be me. It has to be someone else. So again, yeah. even at this point, you're like, wait, is it? Is is this because when it keeps going to Idol Mima and Mima's talking to Idol Mima, it there's flashes of Idol Mima and Rumi. It's not consistently Rumi. You know what I mean? So yeah. even at this point, you're just like, okay, what the fuck? So she's like, please stop all of this. You know, um, uh, please, please, please. And as she's getting like attacked by Idol Mima. Again, it looks like Idol Mima. It doesn't look like Rumi. So again, we don't know. But she starts choking her, and yep. then it and then it looks like Rumi. Uh, so yeah, and yeah. fucking hell, it there's the ice the ice pick or whatever comes out again. Yeah, she gets stabbed. Yeah, she's trying to escape. It's it's just and the fact so when she's choking Rumi because she's trying to be. She's trying to stab her. Rumi's trying yeah. to, on top of her, trying to stab her, and she's choking Rumi. And her face gradually turns from Idol Mima into Rumi. So yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That so was very you, clever. There's a bit of a slip, but again, it's like, is it actually her? Because it, it slips back into Mima's image, right? Uh, yeah. So you're just like, okay, what the fuck? Uh, and then yeah, she's trying to escape from her, and there she's climbed out the window onto the balcony. She's getting chased in the street. She's gliding along. Uh, yeah. Idol Mima's gliding, which again throws me off because I'm like, what the fuck? Um, and yeah, because the you don't know whether you don't yeah. know whether that, that she's this is really happening. Well, because yeah, why is she gliding? You know, it keeps you in this state of. Surely this isn't happening. Like, nobody glides. But then it starts to solidify it a little bit more as the sequence keeps happening. Yes. That when she's running, you can see Rumi in the reflection. Yeah. Like, and she's struggling. She's not, she's, 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 oh, she's she's not struggling. gliding. No. She's not gliding. It's in fact the opposite. She's sweating. She's sweating balls. Yeah. Um, but she, yeah. It's like, you know, like, Mima is still seeing... Idol Mima just floating easily, bouncing along. I think in reflection, that's important actually. In reflections, Mm. she sees Rumi, I think. Yes. Yeah. But in when she turns around and looks at her in person, she sees Mima. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's important. Um, Yeah. There's still a bit of a struggle. um, And I think. Eventually, uh, uh, Mima pulls off her wig, pulls off the idol Mima's wig, and then we obviously see that it's Rumi. It's Rumi. It's Rumi. She stumbles onto the street. Um, she's fucking distraught. And and there's an oncoming vehicle, and she's about to get hit. <laughs> and then fucking Mima jumps in front of it and pushes her out of the way. I mean... Ever wow. the hero. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, kind of surprising. So even I, you though know, even though hmm. Rumi is she's fallen onto a bit of broken glass. She's bleeding everywhere. She's she's not gonna survive this. I'm telling you right now. She's there's bits, Yeah, it's over. It's GG. It's over. You know, but she puts the wig back on. Um she does. We, get, we get the famous shot of um Idol Mima with blood on her face, looking all demure. Um, and, uh, you know, Rumi's, Rumi's ready to be hit by a car. 
She's ready to be hit by that truck. But but real Mima insists that it doesn't happen. For some fucking yeah. reason. I guess I don't know. I don't know uh, why. She has She's, I think yeah, I I don't know. Because it's really hard, like if you were put in that position, would you do the same thing that Mima did to try to save her? Because in reality, she could have been killed, right? If she didn't yeah. manage to push Rumi and herself out of the way in time. Now Rumi's a big girl. This yeah. is gonna take more effort than say grabbing a child and yanking it out of the road. Which yeah. is still a lot of effort. Have you yeah. lifted a child that is like four <laughs> years old? My God, those things are heavy as fuck. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, um, it's, it's impressive. But I guess in, in when you've got that adrenaline, um, you know, you, your, your strength is just otherworldly in, in those yeah. situations, I think. So I think that's how she managed so she put she she pushes her out of the way and they're just both on the road and then it flashes to or it transitions to um overlooking, you know, Japan and it's um, beautiful artwork, as it is. always. It really is. It's gorgeous. And yeah, then you see Mima, who is older. She definitely looks older and her hair's she's longer. Grown her hair out and yeah. um she's visiting Rumi in in a her hospital. Ward. Yeah. She re- so once in a while she returns to her roomy persona. So we still see that she still thinks that she is Mima because she looks in the reflection. She sees yeah. herself as idol Mima holding a big bunch of flowers that the real Mima has brought her. Yeah. And um she, you can see that she's um she's been visiting she's been visiting a, a ton. Um and she's like, "Well, I still she made me who I am, so I'm, you know, I'm still grateful to her. Yeah, um, which is quite, quite funny. She, you know, she made me who I am, and uh, the nurses don't believe that it's the real Mima either. Because why would she be here? Yeah, but again, the last scene, that last scene, the last line, really, again, throws me off. It's like, what the hell does that even mean? She looks she... in the rearview mirror of her mm-hmm. car. And she says, nope, I'm real. Which, again, you know, maybe it's just that. Maybe it's not deep. Maybe it's just like, yeah, it probably is. Like, oh, I am the real Mima. I'm real. Yeah. You know, here I am sort of thing. But it's like, you don't know anymore. I don't know. Yeah. It really throws you through a loop. I like how we said we weren't going to be, like, chronological. But this movie kind of needed it because it's so... Jeez. Yeah, it's there's so, so many confusing. layers. Yeah. The fact that we both got confused about which bits we were talking about at specific well, been... stages because of the dream sequences. The, like, things happen over and over again. There are so yeah. many different things that keep happening. Well, yeah, de- there's definitely deja vu. Um, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the ticket. That's the ticket. <laughs> we haven't seen it in a while, even though I've seen it multiple times, but... Um, even even if I'd seen it like recently, I still would have been like, wait a minute, no, is this before? No, oh, is the dream seek? Oh, because again, yeah, things repeat themselves intentionally, and you're just—it's really hard to keep on top of what what's happened and what's about to happen and whatnot. But that is perfect blue. It is outstanding. Perfect. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. perfect. It really is. I fucking love that film. It's 10 yeah. out of 10. Like, I know we, we can go to the ratings right now because it was a 10 out of 10 from Sophie. Ooh, yes. I love it. Um, the, the fact that I was second guessing myself all the way through, the artwork is beautiful. Mm. Um, it, is, it is an outstanding film. Yeah. It's just all out wonderful. And I know you feel the same way, G. I definitely do. I love anything that is psychological yes. because it's clever. It makes you think there's there's significance in like imagery and the things that they see, the things that they do. Everything. It's layered. Yeah, it's clever. Everything is placed there for a reason. Like there yes. is nothing that is that happens in a film like that that is... That is just there for the sake of it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, like everything is significant in it. And 
I know both of us have experiences with very similar themes. Yes, we definitely <laughs> do, which is, but thankfully it doesn't like affect me in that way because good Lord, yes. this is a very extreme situation, but obviously I'm sure this happens more than it needs to uh, in real life to certain yep. people. So you've like, I I would assume you've heard about Chappelle Rowan. I, like, I'm not a fan of her music, but she's been hassled. And she doesn't want to be hassled. She's like, I just want to go places without being... Hassled, right. No, I don't know anything about this. Um, Like, people asking her for photos. People, She's like, just leave me alone. I just want to go places. I don't want to be hassled. I don't want to... Like, it's constant. She's like, you know, I love writing music. I love being a creative person. But people need to just stop hassling everybody. I, You know, people are always... It's like... Fame is such an accessible Some people thing. like it. Some people like the attention, but I think oh, other yeah. people are just very content with doing their work and then not being perceived outside of that. Do not perceive me. Do not perceive but me. It's so easy to get a, a, even a small level of, in inverted commas, fame from yes. the internet now as well. Yeah. That you see that even though Mima was in like a small idol group... Like she was, it, it was, escalated. She wasn't, yeah, she wasn't a famous person, really. There was a few people that recognized her, but like, not to well, the extent that you'd that Chappelle yeah. wrote or whatever. Well, um, so so the important thing to note about this and the the who was behind everything was yes, it was Rumi. Mm. And it was also Me Mania, so the weird yes. guy. Um, so I think Rumi was controlling Me Mania. Yeah into writing the blog and being like you know the real Mima well the Mima the, the one that we is an actor now is an imposter and we got to take her down and I'm the real Mima and etc cetera, etc cetera. so I think this, this guy was very suggestible to that oh 100% because he wasn't on board with her you know leaving uh, Cham and going on and being a, going on to be an actor. So Rumi was a idol, but I don't think she was a very successful idol. No. Um, so she moved into managing, and I think she obviously she's the one with the multiple personality disorder and identity disorder, and she, you know, did all these things and made made Mima believe. You know, that yep. she was the one who could potentially be killing people because Mima was obviously reading about it. And but obviously dreams are a powerful thing. The psyche is a is a very powerful thing. You know, if you're experiencing things and you're going through things, it can seep into your mind. The, the, um, the mind is a really complex thing. Oh, God. Yeah. The Which is why I... Mm. That we can be so confused by this, yeah, um, yeah. Just trying to keep on top of, but you, yeah, it, it's it's complicated. It's really mm. complicated, and I think he, you know, the person who made this is just so Satoshi Kon, just so expertly crafted, such an it's... expertly crafted story, and it really was told so well. Um, I and I, I am a huge huge fan of this film like i was super invested the whole way through yeah um yeah and like the the fact that it, it, it there is so many parallels and this is from 1997 so this it's it hasn't aged a day which I is in some ways has, yeah. very sad i mean of course like she wouldn't get a fax anymore but uh mm. it would it, it's it's definitely it, influenced other things in cinema. Um, yep. And it, I mean, uh, the, the the style the style is just... I always love anime from the 80s and 90s. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. It's, um, it's Again, it goes, thing. it goes back to the Beetlejuice argument because there was... It's not as... I think, like, obviously animators definitely still have, like, a harder time with animation cells and it's hard work and it's still like a long strenuous process but obviously back with you know in that time with movies like Perfect Blue or Akira 
or mm. it's it's a lot hard. It was a lot harder, I think. Um, I think so. Do you think um, anime has like newer anime, however mm. good it is, has mm. lost some of its artistic charm? I think it has. Yeah. yeah. So there's obviously there's a lot more anime out there, and a lot of it is shit. <laughs> but you get good studios who can yep. animate right and and do it well but yeah you i i feel like you don't get a lot of these types of movies nowadays right no. like you've got your your ghibli ghibli however the hell you want to pronounce ghibli, it ghibli but ghibli that, Ghiblis. Is a, that has such a huge following that it's like guaranteed a success among a, a lot of the world so you kind of it's they westernized have the budget. Yeah, yeah it's westernized they have the budget and they like they have budgets from all over the shop and they can afford to put that effort in um and keep that style and the the what's the man who own, run run ghibli uh miyazaki yeah so he he's very specific about what he wants yeah, it his vision. Like. And, his vision, yeah. and I love that. And he's keeping that, and everybody's on board with that. They're like, "Yes, you do, you king." Yeah, um, it doesn't feel like like if you watch like a Ghibli film today, even like I haven't seen the heron, the boy in the heron, or whatever it's called. But I feel like even the newer stuff still is reminiscent and still feels reminiscent of the stuff from the like yeah. his earlier work. You know what I mean? Which mm. is nice, you know? It feels like it hasn't departed that much from that style. Um, but Completely. It's, but I feel sad because, yeah, I feel like they're... Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe maybe I'm just not looking hard enough, but I feel like I haven't seen much of this style of animation... In a long time. In a long time or, you know, for today's standards. Um, I- but... Yeah. There will be there will be some out there, and it's yeah. just the fact that we we do live on the other side of the world to where that stuff gets put out, and you know it's very specific circles. Even though you know there's the internet, yeah, and maybe it doesn't break to the West, and it's it's specific so. to because Japan's very particular about stuff that gets released to the West. It gets released yes. to the West, but after an extended period of time, yeah, and it's it, you know. Power to them, whatever. But yeah. it's uh, you get sometimes they feel like oh the Westerners will understand this one, they'll get yeah. it. They like this style of stuff, whereas maybe the authentic stuff. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get recommendations through everything that you do. Yeah. Like hey, gee, you love this because. So yeah, maybe they'll, yeah. They'll, this they'll, is your um, style, so you might be more attuned to to yeah. that. Well, he also did like paprika. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not huge on paprika, but I, I see, yeah. I respect it. I respect it. Yeah, um, I do prefer Perfect Blue over it, but I it's still I absolutely love it. It's still a great film with amazing visuals and animation and a, a very intriguing story that 100% influenced like uh inception um and mm. god and like you know just dream sequence type stuff in general. Speaking um, of uh, Inception type things, um, I'm browsing my Twitter feed and uh, somebody posts little clips from old films and there's a film called Dreamscape that's come up. Mm. Did I put that on my list? That uh, sounds familiar. I feel like you or I, Simon have mentioned this. I love Dreamscape. I talk about it quite a bit, but it's about basically like there's a psychic who can go into people's dreams and mm. plant ideas and they found the idea to um assassinate the uh assassinate the president so they, okay. it's like inception where they go into his dreams and say hey you I mean, should yeah you should kill your dad gotcha um, or whatever it is so Put yeah it on that, the list i that I, sounds... I, you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, i'm that gonna sounds change really out. good i'm gonna change we, we still got our list from last um from the last time which mm. I, we will go through uh in uh, in a short while gee uh what was the budget do you know the budget of perfect blue 90 million yen which is a <laughs> budget of 830,000 in it- america in, in us dollars yeah 
Um, ba, ba, ba. So that's about £500,000 back in 1997. What about yeah. a bit of, bit of buying power? I don't know how that compares to other other films, other anime of the time. Of the um, time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was originally conceived as a live action feature. But Interesting. It became an anime when several backers abruptly pulled out in pre production. Right. Um, That's, I don't know how that would work. Although, in saying that, we have, uh, what's that called? Black Swan? Yes. Yeah. yeah, the one with uh, Natalie Portman and yep. Mila Kunis is in there. Um, which is similar. <laughs> Yeah, like when Mima is taught about how to use the internet, the browser used is Netscape Navigator. At the time oh. of the film's production, Netscape was the most popular internet browser on the planet, but gradually designed, declined popularity over the following years. <laughs> it's like, just that's fact about Next Netscape. Thank yeah, you. That's pretty cool, um, though. Yeah, that's really... says a lot about the time. And, did you um, know Madonna used extensive selections from this film as a backdrop animation during a dance interlude on one of her tours? Really? Yeah. She's always been like really weird and quirky like that, but that could be like her choosing that or her production crew being like, this could be mm. cool. Let's use this. This, this is quirky. Um, yeah, see what yeah. I mean? Released in Japan, 1998, a year later, released internationally. So again, Japan with their damn releases, always a year later. Always a year yeah. later. Um. So yeah, it's uh, body count four. Oh. So um, uh, the term blue is also used for like a uh, blue uh, blue films that are like porn. So oh, very um, cool. Although Japanese f uh, shows and films, a lot of sometimes their titles are nonsensical. They just have words. Right, um, but this isn't the case for this, right? No, because I think I the know. well, the, the original story um is called Perfect Blue Complete Metamorphosis. Yeah. Um. So he was allowed to deviate from the original story, Satoshi Kon, as long yeah. as it still contained an idol singer and a stalker, and he could just do anything else he wanted with the story. But I'm it had to, to have those two that. things. I want to read that book. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually quite interested. See how different mm. it actually is. Yes. Uh, and there, there was a sequel book uh, novel as well, so, you know, mm. you could have a little what, little read. But yeah, I thought that was cracking. Yeah. I think it's brill. Um, no notes, can't really fault it. I literally wrote, can't really fault it. That's so how good a, that film is. It's a 10. It's a 10! From both of us. Yeah. God damn. God damn. God I'm damn. really curious what Simon would have rated this, but I feel like he would have liked it. I feel like this oh, would be... I would have loved it. He would have loved it. I like, I, I will ask him. Um, yeah. I'm actually going to see. see. See what he thinks. But I... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I love it. It's a great film. I love a psychological... Uh, you know, a movie that keeps you thinking, keeps you guessing, really wants you to pay attention and tells a very, very interesting story and looks at the serious themes and, and, you know, the mental psyche and what fame does to you and what these decisions do to people, even though they're fine on the outside or they appear fine on the outside, but in reality, mm. they're kind of cracking beneath the surface. Yeah. But yeah, it's, love it's, it. It's got so much. It's, it's just really something to think about, which is nice for films, isn't it? It's just nice to think sometimes. <laughs> I yeah, mean, we prefer film, films that you have to think about, honestly, don't we? I really like, I do. I love anything that's clever like this. Like, Silent Hill 2 is one of my favorite games ever because it's so, it is so deep. The the mm. message, the the symbolic, you know, symbolic imagery, the story, the mental things that the main character goes through, why things are shaped the way that they're shaped, in like mm. the enemies throughout the throughout the game, you know, and why they cough up bile, and it's everything is so perfectly handcrafted and done intentionally. Yeah. yeah, it's so really thought, and I res I respect 
stories that are so well thought out like that and really makes you think because of course we all love a mindless film you know like i'm not saying mindless films are bad but like when you ha- when you come across something like perfect blue holy shit you go whoa what the fuck did i just experience and that yeah. really sticks with you and it's, it's definitely stuck with me it stuck with me too like the fact that i watched it in the 2000s at some point and mm. I still remembered it and like, I hadn't watched it since and I was like oh I really should watch that again because it's like I have Ghost in the Shell and I have Akira on DVDs and I, I can watch them periodically because of that and I'm like I really should get my hands on Perfect Blue again and so yeah it's uh, it's it's a sticky one mm. and thank you so much for putting that on your list in the first place and thank you Simon for making sure that you know, even though it wasn't widely available at the time, it stayed on the list because it was it's just that good, you know? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't um just a thing that was widely available. Like Paprika was. I think mm. Paprika was on Netflix, I think, at some point, but you do need to I don't know if it changed for Perfect Blue over the course of these seven months, but it's something that is a physical copy that you you would need to get your hands on a physical copy. Um but yeah. Yep. I, I hope um, I hope you guys manage to get your hands on it somehow. If you haven't watched it before the lead up to this episode, or if you're gonna, you know, think about recommend. watching it, highly recommend. We fucking yeah, brilliant film. Both, both love it. Both love it. Um so moving forwards into Yomp, we have our lists and we will continue to keep those lists going. And we think that for now we're probably gonna take it in turns. Um, to do one from my list, one from G's list, one yes. from my list, until Simon returns, and then we can add some more chaos to everything. Yes. Um, and then we're just going to roll one dice to pick the film from one of our lists. Um, I will uh, go through my list in a moment, because um, obviously we'll be picking from my films. But yes. G, do you have your list handy? Um, I do have it handy. So the last time uh, we looked at our list, obviously it was a while ago. So currently on my list, uh, I do need to replace Perfect Blue, but I won't do that yeah. right now. We'll do that next time. Um, so I'll just say that right now uh, we've got Crocodile Dundee. Uh, mm. We've got Sea of Love, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Shutter Island, and Princess Diaries. I like how Simon has uh, Simon yep. has put these into genres. Yep. And uh, the genre of Princess Diaries is terrible. Yep. So he's got anime, comedy, thriller, action, thriller, and then he put terrible for the terrible. Princess Diaries. Um, Brilliant. So on my list, I've got Labyrinth, uh, Uninvited. Mm-hmm. I'm swapping out that next one. I've got uh, Wild at Heart, which has the uh, genre of Lynch, uh, Total Recall, Cemetery Man, and I'm adding dreamscape to yeah. that list because yeah. it's so fucking cool i'm gonna see if it's actually on streaming first hang on eh, eh, eh. it's on tubi it's free of charge on tubi nice and it's on youtube fucking cracking shit so uh that's one to six we've got one for labyrinth two for uninvited three for dreamscape four for wild at heart five for total recall and six for cemetery man uh so i'm going to make us do a roll in this room i'm just gonna make sure that we swap this one out for dreamscape and we're gonna do a little rolly roll if you will our next film is gonna be uh, it's a two it's uninvited Ooh, sci-fi horror is the category okay Category. Category. Yep. That's a little hint for you at home. Ooh. Even I love how all of the films I've chosen are from the 80s and early <gasps> 90s. I cannot that... fucking break through, can I? I'm stuck. The the cover. The oh, cover. Do you like it? Oh so my god. I will put in the Patreon that I've got the lenticular cover <gasps> of uh of uninvited uh it's 1987 um 
and I just want to thank everybody for 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 being patient, you know? Yeah, but we appreciate you back. guys. We are back. We are a man down, but we man hope down. that that he that Simon will come back home to us um eventually. But we hope that you are happy with the two of us in the meantime. You know, I know, I know we, we miss Simon. I'm sure you guys miss Simon, but we are passionate about Yomp. We love Yomp. We want to keep doing this. And but I just, I, I just really wanted to talk to G about cake and some chocolate. Yeah, and, man. And you know, I'm, that's all I want. I missed it. And I missed it so much. <laughs> I really did. Like, it's, it's sad to say, but there's not a lot of projects that I get super passionate about. Right. But Yomp is, Yomp is one that I am super passionate about so i'm true i'm very happy that it's back she's like a kid on the way to mcdonald's she's just so excited man. there's not a lot of things that like keep my attention so when something does um you know i i I hold on for dear life uh an update for you guys i guess just to keep your expectations um at at one level for releasing and and Mm. episodes moving forward so obviously you guys got a new episode every week we will be doing an episode every two weeks we that'll give us time to keep our passion for yomp moving forward because as much as yes you know i love doing it we love doing it 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 was a lot to to do an episode every week so so much and it'll give you guys a chance to actually be able to watch you know the movies in time you know give you two weeks to actually you know watch the film and 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 be able to listen to the episode so we'll do uh, an episode every two weeks yep it's just to keep you guys informed and we just want to thank everybody for their for their patience and their support we have yes we've had a lot of people in the course of seven months ask us on twitch yeah on twitter on YouTube, everywhere. Where's Yomp? Where's Yomp? Is it coming back? Where is it? And again, yeah, we're both very happy to say that it it is back. Yeah, I'm eating chocolate now. Oh. I've just been eating something. <laughs> You're eating chocolate. And so you should. Celebratory chocolate. All the way through. I've just been Lovely. eating something something else. Um <laughs> why not, I say. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's everything. We will see you, lovely people, see you. next see you time. In a Fortnite, kids. Yeah, not not the video game Fortnite. None of that. I no, I'll see you in see you in Fortnite, bitch. See you in Fortnite, bitch. Bitch. Thank you for listening and catch you next Goodbye. time. Goodbye. Goodbye.